Spain is one of the world's most beautiful countries, offering a warm Mediterranean climate and a high quality of life. Spain has Europe's fifth largest economy and the world's 14th largest economy. It ranks 18th in the Democracy Index and 29th in the Press Freedom Index. Spain's nature and culture does not only make Spain the world's second most visited country, but Spain is also home to many expats. It's 5000 kilometers of coastline and over 3000 hours of sunshine a year in some regions welcome people who want to move away from rainy northern Europe. Nevertheless, as in any country, there are some downsides that Spain faces and in this video I would like to take a closer look at those drawbacks. Let us begin with the job market. Spain was particularly hard hit by the economic crisis in 2008 and up to this day the country's unemployment rate is still fairly high. The unemployment rate is at about 14% and the youth unemployment rate is at a whopping 30%. The unemployment rate has decreased recently, but still, if you are looking for work in Spain, then you might face some difficulties if you don't work in a sector that is highly in demand, for instance in healthcare or IT. In Spain's vibrant cities like Madrid or Barcelona, finding work is easier, whereas in the countryside it is harder. When I was visiting Spain, someone put it very well in my opinion by saying that Spain is a great country to spend money, for instance as a retiree, but it is a not so great country to make money. The average annual income is at about 25,000 US dollars, which is lower than in Italy, Malta or France, but higher than in Portugal. As most European countries, Spain has high tax rates in place. In the capital Madrid, for instance, expect to pay 45% income tax once you make more than 60,000 US dollars. This is definitely not an incentive for making a lot of money and building building a steep career. The communities of Andalusia and Catalonia apply even higher regional income tax rates than Madrid. In Andalusia and Catalonia, the maximum income tax rate is at an incredible 49%. So you'll be working for the state almost every second day if you are in that tax bracket. The general value added tax rate is at 21%, which is also relatively high. Interests and dividends are also taxed at about 21%, though the tax rate was reduced in Spain's 2015 tax reform. So to sum it up, if you are interested in saving some money in taxes, then Spain might not be the best choice. An additional downside of moving to Spain is the language barrier. It will not be so easy to settle down in Spain if you don't speak Spanish. Spanish is the second most widely spoken language in the world, but even if you speak Spanish, then beware that there are not only many diverse dialects present in the country, but also very different languages like Catalan, Basque or Galician, which are co-official languages of Spain. Furthermore, there are some differences between the Spanish spoken in Spain and the Spanish spoken in Latin America. So even if you speak good Spanish, you could occasionally come across a language barrier. And if you're in a region of Spain where many people speak Catalan, Basque or Galician, then you might need some more time to adapt. And if you are not familiar with the Spanish language, then make sure to stick to the main cities of Spain, since English is not that widely spoken in rural areas. Spain is a country with a lot of red tape. Spain is famous for its bureaucracy, so be ready for a lot of paperwork and office visits in case you are planning to move to Spain. There is a report on the internet of one guy who was told that he needed a new residency permit to register as self-employed, but then being told that he needed the self-employment registration to get a new residency permit. So it probably benefits you if you have a more relaxed attitude and react calmly if things don't work out the first time. And it's worth noting that many bureaucratic processes can now be done online in Spain to avoid queuing and booking appointments. The more sluggish pace of life in Spain is one of the qualities that draw foreigners to Spain, but when you have important things to do, then it may be a bit frustrating. Restaurants are opening for dinner at times when the majority of expats are preparing for bed. Additionally, a lot of businesses close in the afternoon for siesta. Don't expect the same order as in Germany for instance, but on the other hand, people are also more tolerant and don't take things too seriously. It's another attitude towards life that you just need to get used to. For visitors, August may feel like the entire nation is on vacation. At least if you don't live in a coastal city. Many people take their vacation in August, so non-touristic villages can get quite empty. Many villages slow down while companies close while their owners and staff are on vacation. 
you'd better prepare to complete anything you need before August arrives. On the flip side, August may bring a massive surge of tourists to coastal towns, which might result in overcrowding, traffic and other inconveniences. A good example is the Balearic island of Mallorca. In summer, millions of tourists come to spend their vacation on this island, making it very crowded. While in winter it is much more quiet, even though the island is just as beautiful. So be aware of these fluctuations between seasons and you'll be just fine. If you are considering purchasing real estate in Spain, then it doesn't hurt to be a bit extra cautious. As anywhere, it is advised to first rent to get to know not only the property, but also the neighborhood better before committing to buying the house. But another fact is that in the past there have been several issues with obtaining approval for constructing housing in Spain, which led to construction of many properties without permission or with only partial permission. As a result, some people knowingly or unknowingly live in these houses. For apartments, this is less common. So in case you are interested in buying a house, then just make sure to check that everything at the house is approved and within the guidelines of the local community. Another point to consider are internal political tensions and polarization within society. Or as the magazine Geopolitical Intelligence Service puts it, the Spanish political scene has been highly divided for about a decade. The country's transition from authoritarian rule to democracy, which started in the mid-1970s, caused deep societal rifts. Most Spaniards thought those divides had been bridged or at least patched over, but the 2008 financial crisis reopened them with a lot of force. Three key events helped shape Spain's current state of polarization. The founding of the ultra-right Vox Party in 2013, the creation of the left-wing populist Podemos Party in 2014, and the 2017 independence referendum in Catalonia. The emergence of parties on the extremes of the political spectrum, both with charismatic leaders, along with the rising tension between sovereignty and self-determination, created a political environment where the opportunities for compromise seem exhausted. The the rise of political parties on both edges of the political spectrum is not only a problem in Spain, but just be aware of this fact if you are interested in moving to Spain. Independence movements, especially in Catalonia, are also a point to consider. In 2017, people of the autonomous community Catalonia voted in favor for independence from Spain. However, the election was declared as illegal by Madrid and police from all over the country was sent to Catalonia to apply force against the independence movement. There was a lot of violence. The independence movement of Catalonia by the way is also the reason for the fact that Spain does not recognize Kosovo as a sovereign country. Although Spain's public healthcare system is acknowledged to be of high quality, there is a shortage of support services for the elderly. This again is an issue in many countries, but you need to be aware that there aren't many care facilities and therefore it's assumed that old people will be taken care of by their loved ones. As always, the last downside is a bit of a fun fact. Expect to gain a lot of weight after moving to Spain. Spain offers a diverse cuisine with meals that are known for their fresh and regional ingredients. The cuisine is rich in traditions and don't believe that you can resist its many mouth-watering dishes. So be aware of the fact that you will probably gain some extra kilos after moving here. All sources are linked in the video description below. Did I forget some downsides? Please let me know down in the comments.